right, excellent stuff. Thank you, Cedric. We're now going to have a check-in on our Player of the Year race. Let's take people back to the start of the tournament. How did things look when we came in here, Monty? Well, Maria, we came in with eight people really being in the race. Of course, Simon did lead the field with 57, Seth with 48 points, but there were eight coming into the weekend. Jason Yi, Javier Dominguez, Sam Party, Ili Kisi, Sean Goddard, and Yu Takahashi. And the most important thing, especially as we wind down today, that we know is if Simon makes this top eight, the only person that can compete with him from then on would be Seth Matthews. Very exciting, and an update, Cedric. So let's take a look at the records here. Well, we know that Seth is nine and one, Simon is eight and two, as is Javier Dominguez, Eli can see seven and three, and then Jason checking in at six and four. For Sean, for Yuta, for Sam, unfortunately, again, did not make day number two of competition, but Seth is looking to play spoiler here. And again, if, it, if Simon makes top eight, it's a Simon and Seth battle for the ages, which I just want to see. Wow. I just want to see. And remember, too, um, you know, Seth has been a bit of a thorn in the side of Simon. We can't forget about that, too. Murders or Karlov Manor finals, Seth won that one. Yep. So it's always fun to watch two great players square off, especially when there's a little history between them, too. Absolutely. Well, we are done with the draft here for World Championship 30. We are now moving on to standard, and Monty's got you covered with the metagame. Well, we came into the weekend yesterday taking a look at this metagame. Gruel Prowess was leading everything at 17.7%, but everybody felt like it was a really great format. Demir Midrange, Azorius Oculus, and Domain Ramp, the other big decks. And what I can tell you overnight is Domain Ramp really underperformed really not looking great, but the other three decks at the top, all putting up pretty great numbers with Azorius Oculus really feeling like the clear winner from those bunch. All right, there's a look at our standard metagame as we kick off standard here in round number 11. Who are we gonna watch in our feature match area as we turn things over to Constructed? Let's take a peek. Oh, we've got a good one for you. It's a Hall of Fame battle. Seth Manfield versus Shoto Yasaoka. Golgari Ramp versus Azorius Oculus. Let's get to meet the players. Seth Manfield, 12 top finishes to his name. 2015 World Champion Hall of Famer. Like I mentioned, two-time Pro Tour winner. And if he wins this, he'll be in the top eight. Shoto Yasaoka, also a Hall of Famer. Your 2006 Player of the Year. Also a two-time Pro Tour champion. Remember, 10 is the magic number. So Seth here could lock up a top of spot eight. At, wait, how did I say that? Lock up a it. spot in the top eight with a win here. Tell me about these decks though, Monty. They're very cool. Okay, well, we're going to start by taking a look at Seth's deck. This is one of the two decks that Team Channel Fireball Ultimate Guard brought, which is Golgari Ramp. And Seth is actually the main advocate that started off this idea. They wanted to take some of the elements of the Domain Ramp deck that we've seen, specifically Overlord of the Hauntwoods plus Up the Beanstalk, but they weren't really happy with that Domain Shell and instead trying to take advantage of one of the more powerful cards in Standard that has a hard time finding a home, Glissa Sunslayer. This is a great home for this card and it is really powerful. So Seth, as always, was a little unsure about his deck, but so far it has served him well. On the other side, we have Shota Yasuoka on what Frank Carson this morning called the best deck in the room. This is Azorius Oculus. It has been performing the best, but specifically Shota's version. Shota, the only non Ely Cassis person to find founding the third path. This is the card that really pushed this deck over the top in terms of consistency. And one of the other innovations that Shota actually has in his version of the deck is a forest dispersal. This card is an absolute house when it comes to the prowess matchup, and that's why Shota has been having great success so far undefeated in standard. Ooh, nice, nice, nice. All right, everyone, round number 11 is on the way. Who's going to take it down? I'm going to send it on over to Alien Corey in the booth with the call. We're going to take it down, Maria, of course. Is there any doubt? No Corey doubt. Corey sir, alongside myself, Ailey. How are you? Hi. Welcome, friends, to uh, Constructed Standard. No more drop from here on out, friendos. We have a few rounds of Constructed today, and then tomorrow, the top eight, it is all Constructed. So for any draft lovers, Sorry. We'll just have to play <laughs> some more Dustborn cards in these decks, yeah, Corey? Dustborn draft was amazing, though. I must say, what sweet. a great limited format. Oh, but now it's time for winning in Magic pretty much from here Woo! on out. I cannot wait for that. Let's go, Seth Manfield. 
an absolute powerhouse in Magic the Gathering, is at 9-1 up against another player who you, th who you have to think is just like one excellent run away from being a world champion as well. At 8-2, Shota Yasaoka, two Hall of Famers. They've basically done it all between them. So let's see who comes out on top in this matchup. Golgari Ram versus Azorius Oculus. Yeah, two absolute masters and two innovative takes on uh, these kind of established decks that we've seen before. There's just some extra spice in both of their decks that would, you know, give them an advantage here. Uh, founding the third path from Shota being the new spice and then the take on Overlord and up the Beanstalk from Seth being kind of the spice from this Golgari version. Who doesn't love drawing many cards on turn three with that uh, Beanstalk Overlord of the Hauntwoods combo? Yeah, absolutely. Really slow start here from Seth. He would have loved to have up the Beanstalk there to be able to get that card advantage going, even if Shota were to interact with these spells. But still has Overlord or Glissa for turn three as something to cast. And uh, we didn't see founding the third path cast there from Shota, so mm -hmm. wants to do some interacting. Phantom Interference, Soul Partition. A couple ways to keep this uh, Golgari deck on its toes. Yeah, and if we had up the Beanstalk, jamming the impending from the Overlord here would be great. You get to draw a card. If it gets countered, who cares? But as it stands, game one without a bunch of duresses, you're going to see just basically anything that Shota can't deal with is going to get countered. Uh, so we might see this Soul Partitioned or just countered here, deciding what... Uh, depending on what Shota would like to do. Bless the Sun Slayer, really one of the most powerful cards in Golgari. Has been looking for a home desperately and uh, starting to wonder if Golgari is looking pretty darn good because the other Golgari iterations at the tournament this weekend have, I believe it was a 6-0 record against the Oculus deck and nothing on the end step there. Yeah, and didn't counter this. That was oh. extremely interesting here as uh, that's a card you really got to deal with. I mean, yeah. is that just saying that Shota is going to take a hit from Glissa here? Would be... Maybe. I mean, you have the Soul Partition to be able to just exile it, make it cost a little bit more so you don't have to deal with it, but not using his mana there yeah. is not necessarily ideal. Maybe worried about a little uh, more threatening threats than... Uh... <laughs> The zombie elf with first strike, death touch, and a whole bunch of text on it. That's about as threatening as it gets, yeah. really. <laughs> <laughs> and overall, this Golgari deck, you know, we were we were talking in the intro that this Azorius Oculus deck had a great win rate. It did. It absolutely crushed. This Shota Ely played this version and uh, just kind of dominated. The Golgari Ramp deck, on the other hand, didn't exactly have the best weekend there. A lot worse of stats. Yeah, Golgari mid-range uh, without the Beanstalk over uh, sorry, Overlord package. Yeah. Having a bit of a better time, but yep. uh, we're going to take a look in hand here. With Duress is Seth Manfield, so let's see how Shota wants to respond to this. Yeah, and can't counter it with the Phantom inter Interference. It just has three soul partitions in hand, so <laughs> we'll more than likely see Shota just show the hand and, yeah. and then... Shota can interact with Glissa, but... It's a lot of uh, partitioning yeah, happening no kidding. over there. Yeah, Shota playing the four full uh, the full four copies of that card. Really innovative in his list, and just an incredibly powerful removal spell. Especially, every time I look at a removal spell like this, or just a removal spell in the format, I'm always thinking of Gruul Prowess in mind, because that's the deck that all these players were coming prepared to beat, or at least try to. Yeah. And uh, this is a great one, just being able to exile whatever creature they have from the Gruul side um, and get around some of the pump spells is exactly what you want. Yeah. And uh, if ours dispersal card you don't see in too many of the uh, blue base decks. Yeah, I think this is yeah. just Shota. Yeah, it's just, you know, one mana bounce, bounce an attacking creature, so, mm -hmm. you know. I suppose and that gives Shota more options as to how he wants to deal with this Glissa. And Surveil, which is really yeah. important. If you can ever Surveil oh, one of your Oculus... Uh, <laughs> Oculi. Oculi to the graveyard, it ends up being really, really strong. Yeah, that's, that's actually a very good inclusion. It's, Shota's, it's a nice tag. Shota's a real smart guy. I'm just really gonna, is. Just going to say. And for anyone who doesn't know a lot about Shota, well, you must be living under a rock for a yeah. while, as he is one of the goats. Um, but he likes to test by himself. Yeah. Yeah, so kind of finds all this tech by himself. And it's been the case in the past, too, that he just really theory crafts a lot more than even playing, mm -hmm. which is just something I can't do, that's for sure. I got to play the games to know what's going on. 
theory crafting is uh, one of the one of the most f favorite parts pastimes of uh, Magic. That's for sure. Definitely. You're like, ooh, but what about this? What about that? What about this card? Nope. Shota says no, thank you. Get that out of here. So no, Overlord of the Hauntwoods. No Everywhere Land. And the turn passes back. Glissa's in hand. We've got Dead Cover Up and Anoint with Affliction. No second Black Source yet, though. Shota really got punished by not casting Founding the Third Pass straight away on turn two. He didn't have anything great to go with it. You know, you you didn't have anything to cast from hand, so I, it makes sense why you don't want to do it. But you always read ahead. Exactly. Yeah, he could have read ahead to just mill and then hopefully find the helping hand and stuff. But as it stands, just three removal spells. Woo! Hey! Great draw. Okie dokie, we got a big old floating eyeball. Exiling all those cards in the graveyard, so any future gins are gonna be a little little, but uh, yeah, this Oculus on the upkeep. <laughs> Oof, this is going to be rough if Seth doesn't have an answer for this guy quickly. And Seth does have three answers for it, and we are probably going to see one of the better answers here as we have <laughs> Deadly Cover-Up, plus you can collect evidence to make sure that this is out of the graveyard. A wow, huge play, and this is just a one of or two of in these lists. Looks like Seth decided to play two, two yeah. and this Deadly Cover-Up is looking excellent. Now Shota will have to rely on the Hwadi Jins uh, to be able to kind of close the gym. Oh, close, close the, the gym, game. yeah. Close I, the I, gym. I understood what you meant. <laughs> Jeez. All righty, so four eyeballs taken for whatever soup Seth Manfield's concocting, which is brew of some sort, no doubt. In the, yep. In the Dusk Morn setting. <laughs> so this is going to put a big roadblock in the way now for Shota. You know, a lot of the power comes from this powerful three drop. Yeah. This is really what turned this deck into a kind of niche playable tier yep. two strategy to really being amazing because these decks existed before. It was just Huadi yeah. Jin, a bunch of counter spells, and it was okay, yeah. but you needed a second threat, and uh, <laughs> yeah. Oculus is just a better card than Huadi Jin sure. sometimes and uh, ends up looking really, really strong. We've got the rest of this cottage getting in for some damage, making some food tokens there for Seth. And you mentioned other threats, you know, there have been previous iterations of the deck, some yep. playing the Crab, others playing the Talarian Terror, which can come down for one, yeah. you know, depending on how many uh, instants and sorceries you're, you're chucking out. But uh, one thing I do love about players of this caliber with this much experience, just look how quickly they play. <laughs> for sure, Shota is one of the fastest players oh, yeah. to ever do it. I remember watching a match between Shota and Luis. Oh, that, and yeah, I was I was casting that one, I think. Were you? Okay. Yeah, Probably I, not for long. Whew, yeah, no, very not, very yeah. much not. But they were both playing a control matchup, so it's just like boom, 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 boom. Exactly. Seth a little bit more, Whew. you know, he takes his time a little bit more, but still a very fast player as well. Not trying to bluff every draw step like uh, some players do in certain <laughs> spots. Moment of truth. Let's take a look at some cards. Another moment of truth and two finding the third thoughts. Okay, I like that. And he does have a helping hand, I believe, so he's just nice. really looking for a gin. But the thing is, Seth has multiple removal spells for it already, so even if he finds it, it's not looking great. Um, and yeah. this creature land is kind of just going to run away because Soul Partition is exile target, non-land permanent. Yeah. Seth knows that, and there's really no other way to deal with this Restless Cottage, so. Jeez, three Soul Partitions. Yeah, so you can Wowza. Just, yeah, and this, it's back, you know, but it's going to be dealt with here pretty easily. We might see Soul Partition oh, on his own uh, Huadi Jin. Yeah. Goodness me. Yeah, go for the throat available here to get rid of this gin. If not, why not? No real need to uh, munch some food there, but uh, yeah, Soul Partition will take care of the gin, getting the cost reduction from the gin itself. So Shota is in bad ways, nonetheless. Yeah, and here comes more damage, and now all of a sudden this cottage is lethal next turn. Mm -hmm. He's got more food, so he's gaining a ton yeah. of life. He's got a buffet there. Go ahead. Use as a three on one token. Yeah, just What's get that? one of those tokens out there. You have three oh, now. Three so three. Make that one go buffet. There we go. There we go. We got there. And now the best case scenario is Shota being able to play the gin and just block. Yeah. You know, and just trade for this. But we so know that there's a good amount more. of removal oh, spells. Oh. Yeah, another affliction oh, oh. can take care of that. Cut down would be able to. I believe it's big enough to get beyond that. Yeah, and Soul Partition, the player's double-checking if an opponent were to cast it, it costs two more. Otherwise, you just get to recast it, so 
Soul Partition doing a nice kind of double duty job yeah. here. That's pretty sweet. Response. We're going to see Anoint with Affliction. And that should just do it, to be honest, as there's no counter spell or anything. And if he were to just soul partition his own gin, it just saves it once again. Yeah. But then uh, the creature will just get it done. Chart a course there, discarding a land. And there's another Quadi Gin, but no <laughs> mana to cast it, so this should be game one. Going to Seth Manfield, and Seth's going to be one game away. Ooh, from another from top eight. Locking up another top eight, yeah. Good grief. You know, when these, when these, the best players in Magic are having a good run, yeah. they're having a really good run. Yeah, and I mean, I remember talking to Seth, you know, well before he Maybe won the Pro Tour won. with uh, the breakout deck, the Vampires deck in yeah. Pioneer earlier. And he was, you know, a, a, take, a little taken back with Magic. He wasn't necessarily putting everything into it like he had in the past. But when you went a Pro Tour, believe it or not, it rejuvenates. Oh, uh, yeah, for sure. I would imagine, of course, I would I would not know, but. Yeah, you know, because like at that moment in time, you are the best player yeah. in the world. And now, I mean, he just has an incredible resume. He's won so many Jesus. big tournaments. And uh, looks like Shota Mold to five here. That's painful, especially with the duress here from Seth Manfield getting rid of one of the spells, one of the duplicates in hand here for Shota, helping hand in the bin. Yeah, and just another threat here makes a lot of sense uh, from Shota, just with those deadly cover-ups being able to take care of four out of your eight threats. You really need something else, so he has three Monastery Mentors in the board to just kind of hedge against that a little bit. We do have a knock with affliction. Go for the throat to take care of this mentor. So no, land no little critters. Not no land yet. He still has two other of the beanstalks. Yeah, so, he'll you know, draw out of it. You'll, you'll, you'll get some return on investment here for sure. Okay, nice. Oh, that was huge. Very nice. Picklock Prankster. Picklock Prankster doing it all, kind of doing its best. Is it Phoenix and yeah. putting a threat into the yard while getting the thing to help out and bring it back? So, really, really looking good. And this is the type of deck you can mold a five. Yeah. But if you get this absurdly powerful creature into play on turn three, which is near impossible to do if you're casting it straight away, Chihuahua. then you're looking great. And yeah, looking at it, Seth does have a go for the throat to be able to deal with this. No third land once again. Yeah. You're, you're pretty much priced into dealing with it right now. Yeah, otherwise it's gonna hurt real bad for attacks, but I mean, does he think, that, I mean, is this the only chance now for him to up the Beanstalk again to try and find a, a third land? Yeah, but if, uh, no. you just have to, because we even get see the Phantom Interference, like, if that gets yeah. countered, game over. Sure. GG, you see Seth kind of scowling, like, oh, how am yeah. I gonna lose this game when shown to mold to five? <laughs> This is how. This is very much how when you turn your graveyard into another hand, essentially. If Shota would have found another helping hand or the other um, way to reanimate the recommission, recommission yeah. then I think this game would just be over. Or if that's an Oculus there under the manifest, as it stands, we can still definitely play some magic. Seth yeah. needed this reprieve. No, bean stalking. Land? Land. Okay, okay all right. It's all right. No one panic. He's got all four of the up the beanstalk Jeez. here. <laughs> the first overlord he costs with those down, <laughs> this is going to be bam, bam, bam cards. Because even if Shota counts as it, he gets cards, right? Yeah. <laughs> Here's the chart to draw some more cards. And there is an Oculus. And this is bad news bears here for Seth. I think Seth's best chance in his mind is to get to five mana and uh, cast the deadly cover up to protect it. As we know, with that Phantom Interference, that's not going to work out too well. This is looking pretty bad here for Seth Manfield. Hall of Famer, world champion, pro tour winner. Stressor <laughs> at this moment, for sure. Yeah, top decking blot out is not really going to help too much. A one of from the sideboard. Not terrible, not terrible as it does uh, deal with the one threat, but he's still pretty far behind. He might just be pressed, um, forced into doing this. Oh, no. 
Nice. Cool, cool, cool. All right, there's some extra mana. There's some extra cards. So th what Seth is saying here is, OK, I'm going to get an everywhere counter. I'm going to get a land just by playing that. And then if he can draw a land to be able to cast the deadly cover up, he'll be looking OK. He found a duress, which was great. If he found duress and land, he could duress away that counter spell and then deadly cover up next turn. But without the land, the best he's got is deadly covering up next turn into this counter spell. Yeah. And uh, we might be all done. It's looking pretty rough here for Seth. Has to discard another copy of, of the Beanstalk. But the turn passes back now to Shota. Hello. Another Jin on the board. It was a manifest toy. It was a Jin all along. <laughs> it's like that's 11. A large Jin. Yeah, that's a lot of power. 12. Down to three. I think we're going to get him through your friend. Yep, because he needs a land just to compete. Here's the cover up. Here's the counter spell. And we're on to the next one. Ba-boom. Scooping it up. All righty, let's go. Game number three. You know what? It's, it's kind of funny. If Seth had just found land three on time, oh, you've yeah. got to think like that was his game, 100%, because of the insane start that he had. But that just really shows the power to me of this uh, Azorius Oculus deck, winning that game on a multi five where Shota's yeah. hand was less than impressive, just really leads me to believe that this deck is awesome. And Shota oh, has is. one of the best draws here. Oh. Founding the third path <laughs> into Picklock Prankster or into Free the Fae for yeah, free yeah. is just exactly what you want to be doing here. It's basically so Shota's version of Up the Beanstalk. That is so cool. All right, what's he going to cost? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got options. Yeah, definitely got options. But yeah, it's going to be free the face, so gonna mill a couple cards, bring something back. Let's see, do we have a hit? Oof. Okay, Oof, that was close. Very close. Yeah, whenever all three modes are good yeah. like this, mm -hmm. and all three modes are great in this deck, um, Ely Cassis came to this conclusion that this card was busted in his deck. Shota independently, you know, yeah. they did not test together or anything, independently came to that uh, conclusion as well, so. Two great minds coming to a very great inclusion in the deck. That was definitely not stock going into it. Oh, heck no. This is the biggest break we've had with these two players. Just having a big think here. Restless Cottage down for Seth Manfield. Has a go for the throat. Shieldred, Pillage the Bog, Overlord, and Anoint with Affliction alongside Duress. So just holding up removal spells here, Seth made a conscious decision to not pillage the bog here. And if Shota just doesn't play a creature, then Seth doesn't get to use his mana. So we'll see if Seth, or see if Shota picks up on that at all. And it looks like the founding the third path here is really, really strong at just not putting a threat on the battlefield. So Seth's mana gets uh, not used up at all. Shota got so much value on the board here now. Just, this deck just looks at so many more cards than probably any other deck in the field at the moment. Two fairies on an adventure, two finding the third paths. And Seth just reminding himself what this card does, what to expect on chapter three. It's such a powerful, versatile card. Being able to exile an instant or sorcery on the third chapter and copying it too. So if you have two targets in the graveyard, you can get recommission or helping hand and you just have, yep. boom, instant board. Yep, absolutely. So here is the duress. Be able to take out one of these spells and still none of the real power um, from Shota being able to return one of the big creatures. And it doesn't even look like one of them is milled yet. I don't think so. Yeah. So still wants to do some milling to be able to um, find that, to be able to bring back one of your big creatures. Monastery Mentors, she's just been kind of hanging out. I haven't seen it do anything. Yeah, not really. And it's not amazing in this matchup, but I yeah. just think when Shota loses half of his threats, like we saw in sure. game one, you know, that it makes a lot of sense that you've got to bring in some other yeah. threats, but Got when Monastery Mentor out. goes off, it really goes off and closes the game out really quickly. Yeah. And while Seth's deck isn't running as much removal as we've seen in the other Golgari mid-range decks, like he has had answers for it each time. And with yeah. Affliction being in hand there, you know, go for the throat, deadly cover up, 
a little more expensive, so we won't see that for a, a while still. But uh, yeah. And also not finding any extra land at this point. So going to Chapter 3 and Chapter 2 here. Chapter 2, target player builds four cards. And then Chapter 3 would be exile target instant or sorcery. You want to mill and then target after? Okay, uh, okay, so Shota's trying to see if he can mill four cards and then target one of those four cards that gets milled. And I believe the answer is no, because you have to choose a target from the one founding the third path, and then the mill goes on the stack. So the one would have to target one of these spells. Okay. So two separate and then you mill. Exactly. Gotcha. But mainly you have to target before you mill. That's the big part. So it looks like that screams to me. It's a little hard to see everything in the yard, but it doesn't look like there's a great target to uh, cast for the free spell right now. So Shota's like, can I <laughs> can I have more looks more at options. something good, please? Extra options, please. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's a valid question to ask because, you know, at any other event or just like a draft or something, you'd be like, yeah, I'm sure this is fine, right? That makes sense. That's yeah, what I'd like to have happen. So it looks like Shota is now considering casting one of these instants, yeah. casting Moment of Truth okay. now, as you would have that in your graveyard to then copy it again yeah. or be able to cast it again. You had another uh, Free the Fae in hand yeah. as well, yeah. So that would be an option too, perhaps. But let's see what he goes for here with Chapter 3, Phantom Interference. So nothing. Okay, there is the helping hand, and there was a Jin as well. So, yeah, if it would have worked out the way Shota wanted yeah, to, this would have been excellent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, oh, cool, game over, yeah. Yeah, but that is how it will work out next turn. You know, sure. he'll be able to target that helping hand and bring back one of the bigger threats, but can he find it for this turn is the big thing he wants to do. Yeah. Do we have land four? Is this, this is just going to be a three land game for both of these players. All right, so partition. Bin as well. There is land four. Charter course, pick luck prankster, and monastery mentor in hand for Shota. Yeah, more than likely just thinking about freeing the Fey or playing one of these pick lock pranksters. Once again, Shota has done a great job of just attacking Seth's mana. Just making sure he doesn't use up his mana because the Golgari deck's gonna do one thing with two mana. You know, it's not gonna cast any draw spells like Shota's been doing. It's trying to kill a creature, that's it. And once again, Seth just stuck on mana and has to make another tough decision. Do I start playing something into a probable counter spell? Village the bug. Just what looking he's gonna for go a for. land. He needs to find one, so I'm gonna look at the, the top X cards, where X is twice the number of lands, so I guess look at six and see if he can find something of use here. Yeah, and the big story of the game that Seth won was he was able to get a lot of mana down, he was able to deal with all the threads shown to present it, yeah. and was able to present a clock. Although it was not extremely fast, five turn clock with the 4-4 the four, four over and over again, it was still a clock. Yeah. Given enough time, Shota will assemble some turn where he can double creature, you know, yeah. can maybe play Monastery Mentor with a couple spells backed up, or um, just find a counter spell for the first removal spell and kind of yeah. slow down Seth. You know, because like you mentioned previously, these decks aren't really playing board wipes, you know, mass removal. They're playing targeted removal for things like the Gruul Prowess deck. So the fact that Shota, you know, could now go Monastery Mentor into a spell, we're going to yeah. see a, a very, very wide board here pretty quickly. Here's the big turn, because founding the third path that's coming off Chapter 3, we're going to see that ability of exile target instant or sorcery from your graveyard. Copy it. You may cast the copy. So you got to cast it. Uh, right away, and oh, Ooh, Seth nice. has the Terra Sunder. The nice play to make sure that he doesn't get that free helping hand from the yard. But now Seth is tapped out, so Shota has the ability to cast one of these threats and kind of back it up a little bit. Has the Monastery Mentor, but doesn't have the fifth oh, land to back it up. That would have been ideal here for Shota. Yeah, that do you was even risk it now, or do you just, you know, I mean, Shota's got to feel pretty good right at this moment because he's doing more things. He Okay, sure, only has access to the same amount of land, but he sees plenty more cards than Seth is going to. Definitely. I think you start with the Free the Fae and try to find a helping hand, but I could also see him doing this and then casting Free the Fae at end step yeah. and just kind of doing this small stuff. 
uh, to make Seth deal with that. He's also setting up next turn where he can attack with this Picklock Prankster because Seth is not going to want to kill that creature. And then chart, of course, is two mana divination instead of having to discard a card. 1-3 is uh, certainly not a prime removal target, that's for sure. 20 turn clock. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Overlord of the Haunt Woods is uh, going to get a card, but not going to resolve, courtesy of Phantom Interference. But we did find two lands now off the top of the library, Blooming Marsh and Underground Mortary, both entered tapped, so that's all Sith Manfield will be able to do this time. Yeah, it would have been great if Seth could have found untapped fifth land there that to resolve sweet. that Overlord. The Overlord, you know, not amazing against Shota, as uh, by the time it comes down, you know, ideally from Shota's perspective, he's going to win the game already, yeah. but here is the drawing two cards off Just chart, discard. of course. Oh, did we attack already? You already attacked, yep. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you blink and you miss it from Shota. Sure did. <laughs> there is Helping Hand and another threat, though, so now it can just start to be... Shota has so many threats that he can just start deploying them and just working his way through the removal spells, but he does have to be very wary of that do deadly cover-up play yeah. where Seth can get rid of all the Oculus. Yeah, I mean, like you mentioned, though, you know, having multiple threats it won't be too much of a downside to lose all the oculi or all the, you know, all the fairies or all the monastery mentor, monastery mentors. Yeah. But it does also give Seth a look at the deck to see what it is he needs to be worried about. And a look at the hand. Yeah. Most importantly, Solid. how to exactly yeah. play around Shota's threats. Mm -hmm. Deadly cover up is just so good at, of course, being a wrath, of course, getting rid of the card, but giving you full information of how your opponent sideboarded plus full information of their hand so you can play around it is is very, very big game. Such a great card. From, I would say, Seth's probable favorite set oh, yeah. in recent years. I would imagine he's quite pleased with that set as with, a whole. With winning that Pro Tour, mm -hmm. for sure. Okay, now we'll see if Seth wants to do this. Shota was basically saying, all right, I put two really bad creatures on, so if you want to cast your best card of Deadly Cover-Up, well, you're not getting anything great on the battlefield. And we'll see, I believe there is a Huadi Jin and an Oculus in the yard. So if Seth were to pick the Huadi Jin, he'd get that card from uh, Shota's hand as well. I have enough to collect evidence. One, two, three, four, five. We need one more in the yard to collect evidence. Oh, oh hey, Shelly. No, you could collect the evidence there for sure. With the oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But Shelly is like exactly kind of what Shota wanted to see. Play a big threat that didn't draw you a card. He has Soul Partition to be able to neutralize it a bit. And now could be the big turn where we get a threat in play and we back it up with a counter spell. That's kind of the sweet spot yeah. from this Azorius Oculus deck. Who wins? Two one threes or a four five Praetor? <laughs> Stay tuned to find out. First things first, we're going to help out one of these critters in the bin. Looks like we're going to get an Oculus back, perhaps? Uh, Oculus or Monastery Mentor are the two choices. Oh, Mentor could be fun. What else is in hand for him? Okay. So with Shota just having three islands as well, doesn't have the ability to soul partition. Mm -hmm until next turn, but that's okay. Take four from the shield, take two from the draw step. Use your life as a resource here. And you're completely fine with it. Seth Manfield gonna make uh, the fairy's job a little tougher. But there will be the manifest on the upkeep here. If this Oculus survives, it will be ideal for Shota. Cruel Claws, Heist, Blood Out, Deadly Cover, Go for the Throat, Anoint with Affliction. So just black spells aplenty in yep. hand here for Seth. Yeah, Seth has a great hand. And uh, right now, Shota does not have a counter spell at all. Can still free the Fae number four. Mm. But, Partition. yeah, can't really back it up at all, um, even if he finds in a gate or anything like that. Yeah, no spell pierce in the format, so. Couldn't even uh, free the Fae into that, exactly. something like it. So Seth can kind of do whatever he wants. He might, might start with the heist here just to see if the avenue is open. 
and then go for the throat or anoint affliction um, to deal with the Oculus. No gift for you. Makes sense. You know, when you're playing up against like the mirror match or Demir mid range, those kind of things where you have pretty good cards you can take, that's great. Otherwise, this is just two mana super duress where you can take yeah. creatures as well. <laughs> It's a Boltzies without the, without the ouch. There you go, yeah. What do you take of yourself, huh? Interesting With to perfect me, information. Yeah, interesting that we didn't cast Free the Fae at all. I guess if you just Free the Fae, then Seth has perfect information and can just take that card if it's the best. Yeah. But Seth can stop Shota from using his mana this turn by taking Free the Fae if he wanted. Not a great hand from Shota, to be honest. No. Ideally, like another white source to be able to yeah. multi spell. Yeah, if, if Shota had another white source and could have just went Monastery Mentor plus Helping Hand, that would have been great. Now, that would have ran a, a bit of a foul into the deadly cover up, but still. Alrighty, well, goes for your suggestion there, friend. Getting rid of the Picklock Prankster, so that will hit the yard, and I believe that's all of them out now. Yep, all yep. four Pranksters, so no more pranks. Nope, no more picking locks. Now that was a, a bit of a cost for not casting the charter course as well, but holding up mana seems to be a little bit more important. So Blood Out would deal with 5-5. Five, five. Yep. And so will either the Go for the Throat or the Anoint. So looks like Seth is stopping Shota on the upkeep. This does give him the option to soul partition away whatever threat he goes for, but I think Seth is fine with that. I'd be like, if you want to waste that removal spell on this, no problem. I'm not interested in that line, so go for the throat, takes care of the Oculus. Negate off the top is pretty big game. As it stands right now, these little creatures are doing their best, but Sheldred is just gaining so much life here for Seth and doing a lot of damage to Shota, too. Yeah, so now it would make a lot of sense to see the Huati Jin because you can back it up with Negate if that's something he's interested in. But no, besides Shieldred, getting it off the battlefield is too important here. So costing two extra now. And now doing this so that Charter Course doesn't deal four to it. Yeah, oh, yeah that, would be, oof, that would be painful indeed. So extra cards in hand now. We got their Monastery Mentor. I think I saw a helping hand. Yeah, helping hand. And exercise. That looks like an exercise, or is that split up? I believe exercise. Exercise, yeah. So yeah, great hand, really developed. This is a big turn for Seth. Just a very close game here. It feels like the momentum is definitely shifting back to Shota here. Seth has so many things to do in hand, but uh, Shota is just outvaluing him in terms of That's what right. he's got on board, yeah, what he's got in wrong. hand. Got 13, just look 12. at the difference there. <laughs> so Drew and Oculus as well. Now, from basically every turn from <coughs> here on out, Shota's going to be playing a threat. He's just yeah. threat flooded, Damn so down. it's just exactly how he wants to do this. Still would just love a second white source. That would be so good. Yeah, huge. oh, that just unlocks his hand entirely. Exactly. And remember that Shieldred can be cast at a little bit higher rate. Yeah. So Seth did make a conscious decision to not cast it next, this last turn. Instead, played Glissa. Glissa would still be a pretty good attacker. A little extra card draw at the cost of some life, though, so. Let's be careful with using his life. You know, tough spot here from Chota. As Quadigen with the negate backup, that seems decent as it uh, gives you that cost reduction. But we, Seth can just anoint that at end step, and then even if it gets negated, Seth has the whole next turn to do whatever. So Seth Manville's still very much in this but it's going to wait until the end step for actions to be taken. Oculus back down on the board. Do not want to get to an upkeep with that, so we're going to see the blood out. Okay. And now this turn, now Seth knows that this shieldred couldn't be countered. Mm -hmm. 
for the one mana, so it would be pretty hard to not want to just jam that. Unless it gets blocked by the manifest creature. Yep. Shoulder back on the board. Dealing more damage to Shota. He is down to 10. Seth at 11. <laughs> These little fairies are doing their best, man. Yeah, hey, they've They're, done, they've they've done, done an excellent solid job. Solid work. Here comes the big guy. Huge so turn here. Quadijin plus Jeez. getting rid of Shieldred for good. Now, Seth, I believe, doesn't. Oh, yeah, he still has the anoint, so he can anoint the Quadijin. Yep. Um, plus then has a bunch of hand disruption. What an incredible game. This has been awesome. Like, here's a contender for a match of the day. For yeah, sure. absolutely. Kind of two beatings uh, the yeah. first two games, but this third game, very, very close. Much more back and forth. So Mentor, Moment of Truth, the helping hand there too, as well as the Negate. So now Seth can also anoint the Huadijin and basically has to. Yeah. I mean, that thing is going to be gigantic. We don't have a perfect view of the graveyard, of course. Oh, it's, I mean, the graveyard's almost as big as his I'm going to say it's lethal. Yeah. yeah. We're just going to, we're just going to guess it's going to be lethal. Look at the size of the shadows there. That's, that's <laughs> a large graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. So Seth gets to essentially pick two of these cards because he's going to bat. Mm-hmm. Sit back for a second. I'm like, wait, what's he hitting? This isn't limited anymore. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the deep cavern bat. Exactly. Flap, flap. So now, what do we want to take? Eight. I mean, yeah, he's just kind of got the, the world is his oyster right now. You know? Yeah. He'll just do whatever he wants with uh, no mana open here. For I'm sure. a little bit more tempted to take the threat here. Yeah. And then just deal with the Huati Jin, and now it's Glissa against the world, but. Yeah. You know, Shota has a lot of ways to buy time with that. Can play another Picklock Prankster, course. chump block it, and then uh, it's all up to Shota to helping hand to find something here, but decides to... I can't, uh, I can't think of that. Now, if Shota finds land five and can go mentor with negate backup, though, that will be quite strong. I mean, at that point, though, Manfield could just play around it, right? Just don't yep. play any non-creatures. Yeah, yeah and just keep swinging with Glissa. I mean, eventually that mentor is going to have to block. True, true. But any spell Shota draws that's a proactive threat yeah. is just very, very scary. Ooh, did he find another moment of truth? Did find another moment of truth, <laughs> yep. Okay, but doesn't have fifth land, so. Yeah. Is that a Gix command? Whoa. Ooh, okay. That is big okay. game. That's a big spell that's going to go unchecked. Oh my, what a top deck. Rass away the board, puts Jeez. some counters on the bat, attacks for six, <laughs> gains three life, loses one to draw a card. That wow. could have easily been a Sunday appearance Gix command here for Seth Matthews. It's got to be. That is the one up in the board. It goes unchecked. Shota is down to four with nothing really going for him right now. Finally finds land four. Moment of truth. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, it really what is. can he find to get him out of this? Soul Partition to be able to deal with the bat, get the Moment of Truth back. But now Glissa will just put Shota down to one. That's going to be it. Unbelievable stuff. Seth Manfield, another top eight for the Hall of Famer, former world champion, and could well be world champion once again. Once again. And I remember sitting back at Woo. home on my couch watching Seth win the world championship. You know, I teared up. He was so excited. The emotions just overwhelmed him when he won that championship so many years ago. I know how much he these moments this means mean so to, much him. to him. So huge congrats to Seth. Uh, what a deserving first top eight competitor. Unbelievable awesome stuff. Congratulations, match. Awesome Seth. Match. Shota still has a chance though, obviously. Plenty. Plenty. Still plenty more opportunities yeah. to join Seth there. So Shota fans. Keep, keep rooting for him, friends. We're going to take a very quick break, but when we come back, we're going to have Korea at the desk.
From October 26th through November 11th, you can get back into Standard right now with five pre-constructed decks available to purchase on the MTG Arena Store.